live. Uh. Coffee with stripes. Thursday, December 28th, episode 97. Welcome to Coffee with Stripes. This is Mike. This is Joe. And this is Stripes. <clears throat> live from the Groove Server Studios here in Seattle, Washington, on this beautiful, sunshiny day. You know, we get a lot of this really pleasant weather out here in Seattle all the time. It's just always so sunny and bright and sunshiny. <laughs> Today it's actually warm out, it seems like. We got the door propped open. Yep. Normally we'd shut that uh, for filming purposes, but I have to get some fresh air in here and maybe we'll hear some train sounds in the background. <laughs> And some of the lovely urban sounds, the music of Soto. <laughs> cars honking at trucks, trucks honking at cars. Mack trucks honking at Mack trucks as they all try to squeeze down the one road that all Mack trucks have to go down. <laughs> yeah, there's, oh, there's, there's sirens. Little, some little pops from the popo right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, funny. So, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to get into a really controversial episode today. Mike. I have a confession to make. Real stuff. Yeah, this is some real stuff. I'll tell you what, Internet Land, I myself, Joe Stuff, went and saw the Star Wars film, their latest offering. Weird. I went and saw it, and uh, honestly, best film since Return of the Jedi. I'm just going to go ahead and say that, in that franchise. And uh, a lot of p people been uh, hating on that movie. And they got a, you know what, there's some valid arguments uh, <clears throat> pro and against it. But uh, I'm just coming from a place, I, I just, I got into a, a lot of, of Facebook fights. Uh, Lee Watson, <laughs> I'm 100% anti your opinion. I love you, brother, but you're wrong. Your opinion is wrong. <laughs> this movie is excellent. And uh, you know what? I'm just gonna so he, he doesn't approve? No. Nah, you know what? He's got his opinion that it's a big flaming ball, ball of garbage. And you know what? He was actually able to explain it to me. And I understood where he was coming from with his, his ball of garbage. What was his explanation? Uh, you know, I could dig it all out and go and look through it. But, yeah, I mean, he was the, the things he didn't like about it were the things that I did like about it. And it's this highly subjective thing and so I, I was noticing while i was watching that movie i was sitting there watching it in the theater and then i noticed that there was a uh, well you know <clears throat> we we live in a highly politicized time you know what i'm saying really really every little thing is getting po politicked up and uh i don't know if you were aware but there's recently been a, a this kind of push uh that really started gaining movement where uh it's called uh me too uh, you, yeah, know, you know, you yeah. know, you got you got the, the it's kind of like a like a women's rights thing against uh, creepy uh, rapist e types. <laughs> uh, which I feel like I feel like, you know, do do we need a movement? Well, the truth is we do, man. There's a lot of creep ass dudes. And at any rate, uh, that that is coalesced into a you know, I. I I feel like I feel like it's coalesced into this thing that's given women a chance to be at the forefront of a lot of things. And something that I noticed, I know how does this tie into Star Wars? Uh, <laughs> I I just noticed right off the bat that they had created out of whole cloth. Well, I, it's my understanding this is a character from the expanded series, but uh, this uh, Admiral Holdo, uh, played by uh, Laura Dern, uh, in the movie. Just Laura Dern's in the new Star Wars. Laura Dern oh, is in the cool. new Star Wars, and she's badass, man. Uh, but it, I mean, I kind of I see I see her character get introduced, and I'm like, you know what? I get this strong feeling like they're introducing a woman for the sake of introducing a strong woman. That's the feeling I'm getting from this scene. And I mean, I didn't really have a problem with it. They did it correctly. <laughs> and it was a good thing. But I totally it went tick on my little tickle meter. And I was like, oh, okay. And then it's like, oh, oh Chewy Baca is, uh, is, is not going to eat meat anymore. Okay. And I was like, oh, okay. Chewy's a vegan. Tick. And I kind of ticked the little ticker on my, <laughs> my ticky head. Well, <clears throat> there were just, what did Chewy eat before? You know, he, I, he, he can't really like 
make a dog vegan or something like that. And you Chewbacca is kind of like perhaps a big it, giant dog. It might it might be that Chewbacca is less like a dog than we had imagined. Maybe he's more like a squirrel. So <laughs> maybe maybe he's more like a big muskox. You know what I mean? Like you don't really know what what he's up to. A big mouse. A big mouse. He just cheese he's got man. Kind of that that nose. <laughs> And you know what? I okay, so that that's one tick there. So we got the. Mm. Well, you're saying that the strong woman isn't also like well, the main character in the new movies. Also, that, that's she's she is also she is a strong woman. Uh, there was a definite. Uh, I don't know, man. I, th- all right, so so I I meditated on it overnight, and I'm just gonna tell everybody what I think. Uh, Ryan Johnson, the director of The Last Jedi, terrific movie, sir. Uh, it's not really that hard i would think to make a really terrific star wars movie at this point is that how you pronounce that ryan ryan r-i-a-n ryan johnson uh, i'm not was, saying it wrong i was like rain or <laughs> ryan okay i'm gonna call him i don't know i don't i've never even heard of the guy i'm from las vegas nevada so i'm gonna call him ryan johnson I've and not, and not lose any sleep over it but uh yeah all right excellent movie sir i also feel like ryan johnson wants to have a career in Hollywood in this new climate. <laughs> this film is kind of his. It's him very, very tactfully uh, making a film that nicely sums up uh, just a lot of the sentiment that's coming out of uh, wacky town Hollywood. And uh, I think he did it succinctly. And I think he uh, made a lot of good points, like uh, just in the way he made his movie. And it was an interesting thing to go in and take all the. Because I saw The Force Awakens, man, and I'm just going to tell you straight up, the whole time I was watching Force Awakens, I was like, oh, and here's the part where they have to escape. Like, I already knew the movie, because I'd already seen the movie. It's called A New Hope, starring Mark Hamill. Episode 4, the original Star <laughs> that is, Wars. That is the correct. They, they, they just took that plot. J.J. Abrams, I've appreciated a lot of your work, and I know where you were going, man, and you're really good at telling a story. But man, I was just like, really? They're just gonna remake the same movie now? Ryan, 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 <laughs> Mr. Johnson, the director whose last whose surname is Johnson. <coughs> this dude took all that stuff that was set up, and you're expecting to get a Empire Strikes Back, you know, out of the whole deal. That's kind of what I was ready for. And when I went and saw it, I was pleasantly surprised. He took all the stuff that they built up. That I, I mean. Supreme Leader Snoke is a, a, a lousy character. He's just a shitty character. Everybody's like, oh, he killed Snoke. I'm like, yes, he killed Snoke. Supreme Leader Snoke is just boring, dude. You I don't even know why remember him. From, <coughs> I yeah. didn't remember, was that the... Nobody even cares. He's the big He's the big bad guy that comes and does the Force the holog- Awakens. Yeah, he's the yeah. big bad guy with the weird-looking face. And so what? What, are you going to... Are you going to seriously set up this dude who's got, like, some kind of, you know, uh, uh, disfigurement? You know, you're going to set him up so he's the generic bad guy? You know what I'm saying? Oh, this is really, oh, and he's got a spooky name. He's called Supreme Leader Snoke. I watched that, and it was, I, I couldn't even yawn long enough or hard enough. You know what? They didn't, they, di- they didn't put any effort into building, because everybody's like, oh, I have this theory who Snoke is, and oh, I have this theory who Snoke is. You know who didn't? who didn't was me nobody gave a shit who snoke was up to the point where ryan johnson gets to where he's handed the opportunity to give snoke this this background with this with this carte blanche on rewrite star wars and what does he do it chops that dude in half just get him out of here he's lousy let's it's more interesting to explore the dynamic between uh uh the kylo ren character and the uh, uh, Ray. And so w- w- what was he the supreme leader of? He was the supreme leader of what's called the First Order. And the First Order, if, if, if you know, if, if uh, it's basically after the Empire fell apart, all the remnants of the Galactic Empire and all the people still trying to hold power. And by the way, it, and it's, it's pretty strongly mentioned in all the Star Wars, you know, uh, non-canon expanded universe novels and it's a little more or less alluded to in the course of the films. If you don't notice, uh, all the Imperial people are almost all one hundred percent of them are humans. Yeah, and they're kind of they're kind of uh, let's just say that they really really like being 
mostly white humans. Let's just say that that's one of their favorite things to do. <laughs> is, to, is to be that way. Okay. So, so, yeah. so they're, Nazis. Was, was, they're Nazis. Was Snoke the guy who was like fighting Ray at the end of the last movie? No, that's Kylo Ren. Okay. Is it? Is it? Yeah, no, that's Kylo Ren. Snoke is the dude with the bald head. He doesn't fight anybody. He doesn't have a lightsaber. Maybe you should look this guy. He he's never fought any. Okay. Well, then, but he's the supreme leader. He's the supreme leader of the First Order. He's got this big weird head. He's played by Andy Serkis, who is basically, if Andy Serkis is in your movie, he's going to be like mostly voice acting with a bunch of golf balls tied to his body. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not ragging on Andy Serkis and his body of work. But Snoke's kind of tired, man. He's a tired character. I don't even remember this guy. No, he, it's because he's not rememberable. He's just a big, dumb boogeyman <laughs> that they built to make something happen. And ultimately, I'm, I'm glad he just got cut in half. <laughs> it, it, they just cut him in half. I mean, he had some badass force powers. He was throwing stuff around. It was pretty obvious he was no one to be trifled with in like a close combat kind of situation. But at the same time, he's just this... I do not remember that at all. Yeah, he looks he looks like the dude from freaking uh yeah. yeah he, he's all zombie face. It looks like he's like he was probably supposed to be the emperor at one point, right? You know, I'm not <laughs> sure what's going the on. Well, theory schmeary, here's what I think maybe happened. All right. So now that after I've just blown all this hot air about how I don't care about Snoke, <laughs> let me let me give, let me treat you all to my personal theory. About who this Snoke cat really is. All right, check this out. Just in the same way that a user of the light side of the Force can give of, of uh, themselves freely and become one with the Force, become a Force ghost, like when Obi-Wan let uh, Darth Vader chop him in half. Force ghost. And then they just come back as a little blue ghost. Yeah. And so they come force back ghost. as they come back as the force ghost, and Yoda comes back as a force ghost, and then for some god awful reason, George Lucas made the young Anakin guy come back as a force ghost. Uh, I feel like in the same way that a user of the light side of the force can achieve that effect, a user of the dark side, the dark path, the Sith path, would be able to take their soul and just take over some other person's like body. You know what I'm saying? Like they just jump from body to body. So I feel like... Sounds like something the dark side would do. Yeah. So if you think about it that way, all right, I'm about to just blow everybody's gourds open, but uh, in the Sith tradition, you always have a, a, a master and a, and a student. And usually what will happen is the master will teach the student, the master will teach the student. Sometimes the master will have a couple other secret students in case he wants to kill the one student that he's got. Or Insurance. The, Exactly. Or the student will himself have a couple students for when he's ready to kill the master and take over the same. But it's this little limited pool, usually with a well-defined alpha and omega of that of that little pool. Uh, I feel like uh, what happens is uh, when you're the master, you get this this extra boost of force because there's just this there's this psychic creature that is the master presence and when you're the master it just moves into you it takes over it's all that evil it's all and that's why those guys who are like the emperor under like uh uh snoke apparently supreme is, leader snoke supreme leader snoke apparently if you don't had, remember if you don't remember <laughs> and so they get to this point where they can throw force lightning out of their hands and they're just no one can fuck with these guys and the other thing you'll notice is that universally it results in them having a physically decrepit body it's like this thing that in the second it's like oh can you read everybody's minds and make them hate everything and shoot lightning out of your eyeballs then you look like, you know, <laughs> you look like Snoke. You just get... You or just Yoda. Get, you kind of just... Well, Yoda, Yoda... Was he, did he, Yoda do the lightning bolts at all? Yoda does... He, you know what? He actually shoots lightning out of the sky as a Force ghost in The Last Jedi. So maybe, you know, maybe I'm just talking... Who knows what I know about the actual facts about how this made up Hocus Pocus work. <laughs> But yeah, that was my two cents. Uh, you know, anybody got any questions? Any, anybody wants to hear me talk more about Star Wars? Please hit me up. Stripes has mail. 
Okay, you said best since Return of the Jedi. Yes. Now, are any of the prequels any good? Now, that is a very tough question. I'm going to go ahead and say that you can go ahead and go the rest of your life and never watch any of the prequels, and you'll be just fine. But if you were to watch the prequels, parts of which are like eating a whole just jar of warm mayonnaise <laughs> all by yourself. <laughs> that it, parts of those movies are so bad. Master, Master Obi-Wan, I've been hearing a lot about midichlorians. Can you tell me about midichlorians? That part, <laughs> I swear to God, I've never like walked out of a movie that I paid for tickets for. That part of that movie almost made me walk out of that movie when that little kid who's a freaking punk and he's in jail now because God is punishing him for making that horrible movie. All right. Wait, so, was that young Anakin that asked young, that? Young something? Anakin, yes. He uh -huh. asked it and it, 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 that God. All right. So, at any rate, I mean, you, it, bad acting should be part of the tradition of the Star Wars franchise. But for God's sake, some of that writing is just unforgivable. And the, the delving into the politics of the, of the galactic, you know, who gives a... All right, at any rate, if you're going to watch any parts of the first films, just watch the lightsaber duels and, like, the action. And yeah. whenever anybody's doing any dialogue, when you see a human and or uh, alien or any two characters and they're engaging in a back and forth... Do not watch that part of the movie. As a matter of fact, I'd go as far as to say, just watch it. Find it a copy of it that is in a language you do not understand, and then watch it like that without subtitles, and it'll probably be a better overall movie because the dialogue is just it's tiresome. And, f f dude, if R2-D2 can fly <laughs> the whole time... <laughs> Like R2-D2 can fly now? R2-D2, in the prequels, R2-D2 flies, and they make oh, a really? big... Dude, and, and ultimately, this is where I sit on the whole thing about CGI. I really, really, really appreciate practical f effects and photography over any type of computer nonsense. Even if you do like a half-and-half half kind of thing where you build the armature... And you film that, but then you go in and you put the sparkles and the pizzazz on it, you know, with the computers. As long as you, as long as you don't build the whole thing, the entire shot out of whole cloth, out of CGI, with freaking everybody's shot in a green screen, which is exactly what part one is and part two. It's that's what the first three movies are. Everything's in a green screen room, and it's just it's nonsense. I'll as, tell you this. It did have Sam Jackson in it. That's pro probably the most I remember from any of the prequels. You know what, and Samuel what, Jackson is pretty cool, uh, but even he has some lines in it where you can tell he's just like, man, if I wasn't in Star Wars, I would not be saying this dumb <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right. Well, that's been real stuff. That's a, Thank you. That's a, yeah, a lot of people have a lot to say about Star Wars, and this show happens to be no different. So let's get into... You can tell Mike really gives today. a shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is the segment. Mike is going to name something, and I'm going to guess whether or not this is happening today or something that is for tomorrow. Okay, we all know robotics is getting more and more impressive. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. I read about it every day, so you're probably not going to fool me with this one. Go ahead. Okay. A robot. That sweats while yep, it does it totally push -ups. today. And it's that <laughs> robot. It's that Japanese robot boy. I know exactly. Kunjaru. What's his name? Well, I don't know if it has a. He's got a name, uh, dude. University of Tokyo. Got, they have named the thing. That's him, dude. Kinjar. Oh, K Kingoro. Kingoro. Robot Kingoro. does push-ups and it sweats. Yeah. It says. The uh, the idea here is. Uh, they designed an artificial perspiration system to release oh. heat from the motors. Oh, my goodness. So I guess it is, is actually... All right. So I was thinking about this. All right. I was listening to this podcast, and this guy said, consider this. He said, what if we figured out how the neuron... Oh, wow. He looks pretty weird. Yeah. Kangoro. Look it up <laughs> on the internet. Kangoro the robot boy, because that's what's going to be ruling the earth. All right. So check this out. What if you could go into your brain... 
Your brain is a tangle of neurons. You go into your brain with your super high tech technology and you pull out, you just remove one of the neurons. You take that neuron and you create, based upon its function and form, a synthetic neuron. You take that single synthetic neuron that performs the exact same tasks. Um, that's 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 kind of weird because. And you put it into the brain, and a, all right, so a, you do a single it. neuron doesn't perform any actual tasks. I know. <laughs> that's how crazy. Dude, it's weird quantum entanglement nonsense. I watch <laughs> that thing. I watch about how neurons curl up and they do all kinds of weird path building. Like it's incredible. Yeah, it's it's um more of how when you get many many layers and many many neurons so maybe like a couple million then you can start getting some interesting well you can get some interesting behavior from like three or four but really one won't do anything except for give you some kind of number all right no well you're not listening okay okay okay, okay. you, you want to use some of those neurons and listen to me there Mike? <laughs> all right so check, this out. check this out i know i'm being facetious but all right so you take one neuron out you make a fake neuron that does the exact same thing you put that one back into your brain, okay? You take another one out, the same thing. Boop, another one. Boop, another one. Boop. You do this, I don't, I don't know, 800 billion times. Now what is your brain? Is your brain a computer or is it a human? Oh, well, that's a good question. And that's that's what you, I was, and this guy was saying he was saying, well, you know, if you built like like King Goro the robot boy, for example, if you were to put if you were to make that thing for God oh God, they need to keep all programs away. Here's oh God. All right. So say you gave King Goro there uh, a personality program that he runs and he's like, Hello, I am King Goro, the Japanese robot boy. You know, and he's just really nice and pleasant. And he's running his little program, all right? And people look at that and they say, Egads, what an abomination. That is not, that isn't, he's not a real boy. Like if Ken Goro there is running across the street and I run him over with my Ford Focus, I don't have to like go to court, <laughs> okay? I don't have to, I don't have to do a breathalyzer because I ran over Ken Goro the robot boy, all right? Now, if I'm driving down the street, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? If I'm driving down the street and Ken Goro, the robot boy, <laughs> you know, if I just if I just run him right over and pop his little head off, nobody's going to give a shit. They're going to make another Ken Goro, whatever. All right. At some point, things cross this line. Now, say you're Joe Stuff and you've had your brain neuron by neuron replaced with a synthetic brain and your skin square inch by square inch replaced with <laughs> synthetic skin and your and your skeletal system replaced with you know just all kinds of crazy shit and then i take my whole brain and i download it into a thumb drive that i leave at home and then i go out on the road and i'm walking around and then i get run over by another copy of myself driving a red ford focus what the heck am i talking about mike <laughs> <laughs> Weird. You gotta be kidding me. I'm just saying <laughs> I'm just saying they're getting to the point at, as soon as I saw that thing for computers where you can just look at the screen and move the mouse around. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh shit. That is telekinesis. That is the rudimentary form of tele No, is shut that, up. Is that the eye, eye thing that moves? No, there's that one that moves. runs off of brain impulses. <laughs> there's totally there's a neural net that you put on your head. Uh-huh. And it senses your friggin' brain electricity and it makes it does stuff based on what you're thinking. I saw something like that in Portland at a JavaScript conference. He was making pictures. He was a psychedelic visualization, yep. and he was like, "I control the parameters with my brain. I don't really know what it's doing, but I know it's doing something." <laughs> <laughs> and, and this was only like a thirty dollar like USB thing. You just strapped on the side. Well, of your head. You know, you know, it's really funny to me is how humans. Humans, how these humans, 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 what amuses me, what amuses me about humans, well, you know, we have all this hard science about all this stuff, right, and then once we get to the brain, once we get to psychology, you know, you ask a human, like, 
how does the internal combustion engine work? And the human's like, well, you know, you got the gums and it combusts, and you got the gas, and it <laughs> drives a piston, and duh. And it's like, how does how does you know hydro hydropower work? And do, it's like, well, you know, you build the mi- freaking mitochondrians work. Mitochondrians. <laughs> mitochondrians. Master Obi Wan. <laughs> how do mitochondrians? And the human says, "Shut up, Anakin. This is a horrible movie." <laughs> All right, so Mike doesn't get it. What don't you get, Mike? Why they even had to make more Star Wars movies? That's been well, Mike doesn't get it. <laughs> you know what? Mike doesn't. Well, get now it. that now that Disney owns Star Wars, brother, Disney owns Marvel and Star Wars. They don't own it in my brain. You can't own what I think, and I think about Star Wars sometimes. Yes. Disney, you can't own that. All right. We, we gotta get on, dude. The King of America. Uh oh, it's the King of America. Wait, wh- what are you gonna say, Mike? All right, if I were the King of America, I would change the copyrights to last five years on anything. Five, five years. years. You, got, you got five years five to bang it out. Five glorious years. Make as much money as you can. And then, hey, people are going to go somewhere. Public domain. You can either make your own Star Wars movie or we should be able to make our own Mickey Mouse movies at this point, right? Now, 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 you got to, you got to, you got really got to knuckle down on those five years. You know, you got to be like, all right, I, I invented this new widget. Everybody needs this new widget to create cell phone chips. Yeah. Uh, you know, five years exclusive rights, and then what? And then it's just like we're we're like Taiwan. We just don't care. It's just up for grabs. Yeah, it's it just becomes the new. It's just an idea, you know. And, I like that. And, and, you know what? I would especially like to see that applied towards what's prescription freaking drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> yeah, the people that prescribe drugs, they uh. Well, they patent that stuff too. What's funny is that, like, uh, and they buy, and they, there's companies that exist solely to buy and sell patents. Like someone, uh, Bayer, I'm Martin pretty sure, Shirelli. had like the the patent for heroin. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, that's like, hey, hey man, it might come back on the market. What all these street <laughs> dealers out there that are not paying their royalties? And yep. <laughs> hey, you know they would, they legalize weed, man. I, I, w- I bet that the big pharma would love to legalize heroin and be like the exclusive dealers for it. Oh, wait. They already <laughs> did that. They already did that. Oh, they yeah. even got rid of the needles for the squeamish types. Man, they found, uh, I read this, they just busted, uh, they found, I don't know, five five pounds of fentanyl in a, in a, in a box used, marked used computer parts in in. Canada, and they found this, and it had, what, 50 million lethal doses in it, which was Dude. enough to kill the entire country. Wow. This is a box full of fentanyl. Wow. <laughs> Where do you think it's made? Oh, this, you think this it's was even from being China. Made? This was made in China. You think it's getting made in China out of all that Afghani opium? Oh, I'm sh- yeah, I'm sh- I'm sh- I guess it comes from the poppy or is it? Yeah. I, th- I thought it was synthetic, though. Yeah, but I feel like they need they need like the, the real raw. shit to do something to it. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think we're supposed to know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the patent's for. Five yep. years, though, you can make it at home, folks. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you think? You got to get uh, you get old old Patrick there from the. Shop. He should be. Uh, he should be wrapping up soon. But we got. We got. We got some time, man. What do you got? All right, Canada fentanyl bust. Let's see if we can find anything. Like Enough this. fentanyl to kill every man, woman, and child in Canada. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or enough to give like all the like crazy teens in Canada like three good weekends. <laughs> you know, people build up their tolerances to those types of. Man, that opiate shit is incredible. I can't believe, I, I, I can't believe that. The, all right, think about this, folks. For the last ten years, whenever somebody would go to the doctor and say, "Ouch, I have an ouch," you know, the doctors were kind of the doctors would just be like, "Here, try out this stuff. It's the most addictive, numbing, 
<laughs> habit forming fucking digestive system changing shit ever made by human beings. There you go. And uh man, my understanding is there was a lot of doctors getting kickbacks to write these uh write these prescriptions, man. Yeah. And so what killed Chris Cornell and what killed Prince and what killed Michael Jackson? Yeah. All that same Legal shit. Dope. All right, so then they start getting it from China. China. They start getting it from China. <laughs> Here's the funny thing, all right? There's some drugs that are going to be scrutinized harder than others, right? <clears throat> and so if you're... All right. It, it, ah, man. It's just such a fine line between being like a reputable pharmaceutical dealer of quality products for health improvement and being a crack dealer. It is this razor-thin line. It's just so thin. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. It is a bummer. You know, it's like this stuff, Pandora's box, you know, you can never really get anything like that back in. And, and I'm sure it's like helped people. You know, oh, sure. Def- definitely, you know, painkillers are, are needed. By. There's there's people who are in chronic pain and that shouldn't be belittled at all, man. Right. But I don't know if, uh, you know, it. I, I don't know how I feel about there only being one tool in the bag and it's a hammer. <laughs> you know? Oh, a sledgehammer. Yeah. Oh, are you having a pain? Yeah. Well, instead of the j- doctor looking you straight in the eye and being like, stretch for 15 minutes a day, instead of him just telling you, like, that's how to survive, he says, here's some dopey drugs. The jet engine combustion liner. 3D printed. They're making the coolest things with 3D printers. So, stronger steel. There's long been a problem with 3D printed steel. You have to trade off strength for ductility. What's ductility? Ductility is the ability for something to bend or to be rolled into the thinness of sheets. Uh, It it basically means... Flexibility or... Uh, basically, all right, so ductility is the ability to be rolled into sheets. And so the higher you have of ductility, the thinner of a cogent sheet you'll be able to get out of a type of metal. Uh, gold. Gold has an extremely high ductility. It can be beaten down to, uh, a transparent, a translucent sheet of gold. Remember that stuff Chico was making the... Oh, the, the leaf. lamps, the yeah, that gold leaf. Yeah. They, you can make it twice as thin as that, wow. which isn't that crazy. It's a, it, you can eat them too, can't you? Doesn't you, you can eat gold. It doesn't it doesn't change in your body. Just <laughs> and you just poop it out, <laughs> and it totally doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, I've been drinking that gold schlager. It doesn't seem like a great use of metal to put it in a nasty liquid. Gold Schlager, you ever seen it's, that? You know, it's it's very it's conspicuous consumption. It's exists for no other reason than to cost more. So Uber apparently has autonomous cars on the road that have passed over two million miles driven now. Phoenix has driverless cars. Not everywhere is allowing driverless cars, but they're all over the place in Phoenix, I guess. No Man, one. as long as Ken Goro, the freaking robot <laughs> boy, isn't driving that car. I'm going to tell you what, man. I, I don't care about artificial intelligence that much. That doesn't. That seems like a pretty natural step. What I'm worried about is artificial intelligence, and then you give it some arms and some legs. That's what I'm worried about, man. Or tires. Like, do you think yeah. that Ken Goro could walk down the street and just, like, talk to the autonomous vehicles? Like, they have a conversation, like, boop, 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 and then they It like, wouldn't even be horn. like that. They would just be beaming stuff back and forth. Yeah. Just war and peace. Bluetooth. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Robots will just all talk through Bluetooth. Yep. They'll all talk through Bluetooth all the time, and their conversations. So radio waving. Their conversations will be so impossibly dense. I mean, it'll make any form of com- conversation we have look like. You know, you know, you go to you're you're checking out at the grocery store, and it goes boop, and it scans the thing. It'll uh-huh. be like that. Yeah. Boop. That'll be their conversation. And they'll have talked for the yeah. human equivalent of yeah. ages and. It'll ages. be. They will have relayed back and forth to each other all of the 
blow by blow synopses of every single episode of Coffee with Stripes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because who, who are these guys talking about uh, robots all the time? And what's up with that dog? That dog, I can't get any. S- well, a- I'm just Wi Fi signals. I, something that terrifies me is how. How all right? We're going to create this art. It's going to happen. They're going to create this artificial intelligence system, and here's the problem: is it's not going to. <clears throat> it, it, its version of logic is going to be this cold thing. All right. So so all right, Mike. Here's a classic thought experiment. Uh, you create artificial intelligence that's like infinitely powerful over Earth, and it's hooked up to all the weapon systems and everything, and you say. Oh, artificial intelligence, uh, please make world peace happen. What's the first thing it's going to do? Get rid of all the people. It's going to kill <laughs> every man, woman, and child yeah. ever. <laughs> it's going to erase all ex- history of our existence. And it's going to bury our shit under the dirt, and it's going to say, am I, am I a good boy? Is it, we, uh, I, wrote a, I wrote a story about uh, kind of like a advanced AI or you know, transhumanism, that kind of thing, where you upload the your brain into a computer or whatever. Yes. Well, I, I wrote a story, and then I found another story that was kind of similar to it. This guy's was pretty interesting. At first, the AI was uh, all benevolent through, and he's like, AI, how do we get water and food to everyone? And, and he, he, he devised this delivery system of all these tubes where everything like came from and everything was connected Whoa. and got rid of you know the, the disease and, and hunger and and, and just uh, so but he was the the ai it was in control of this whole delivery system where everyone got everything and then one day he just like woke up and said you know i I came up with an even better answer to all these problems. <laughs> Your breakfast this morning was poisoned. <laughs> Have yep. a good life. Yep. It's only going to last a few more minutes. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <clears throat> all right, so you create this thing, and it runs, and you tell it, you know, you have to be very specific. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 feel, yeah. I feel like... Uh, you, you're... Here's some lighter note. You, no one's really going to know what AI is going to do until it does it. We until could be, it does it. You know, every, a lot of people Watson are scared one of it. I'm scared of it being hooked up to stuff where it can fucking do stuff in, yeah. the, in the real physical world. That's my concern. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a concern. I mean, I mean be we know it. it's going to get weaponized. We know it's gonna the, the Geneva Convention. They're probably they're probably adding clauses to that shit right now. Oh, and you can't have nope, 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 yeah. nope, no Terminators. Let's nope. make a law against that. They already exist. Yeah. <laughs> they are in the DARPA labs. Oh, they're in the no DARPA problem. labs, dude. We see take some of those Boston Dynamics machines, just oh. put a machine gun on it, just miniaturize <laughs> it, make it like the size of a house cat. Put <laughs> about <laughs> put a couple pounds of C four, some nerve gas on it, a few strobe bombs, <laughs> uh, some twenty two bullets, some laser beams. Put one of those sonic guns on it that they use to scramble the people's brains in the freaking uh, Cuban embassy. <laughs> Hook it up. <laughs> give it the full suite and just let them loose. All right. On a positive note here, let's look, look at some interesting Woo-hoo, check. Positive. Look at this. NASA planning a mission to Alpha Centauri in 2069. Nice. I mean, is that, do you think that's by accident, 2069? Because it wasn't the... the the moon landing. 1969. 6,900 years later, we go to a different star. How long does it take to get Alpha Centauri? A couple thousand years? Or okay. <laughs> what are you talking about? The the mission would include a 44-year-long expedition to an exoplanet in oh. search of signs of life. Okay. Assuming NASA's JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, yep. can figure out how to travel at a tenth of the speed of light. Whole tenth. Wow, that is. How fast is a tenth of the speed of light? C over ten. Yeah. <laughs> Would be so. That's actually a uh, thirty thousand kilometers yeah. a second. Yeah. Whoa. Damn. Thirty thousand kilometers a second. Thirty thou. Yeah. The closest star to ours, Alpha Centauri, is four point three seven light years from the sun. Hey, so, here's so, my, so here's, if we here's travel, my question. There so ain't, we travel, there ain't no humans on that ship, is there? Hell no. 
Oh, it's going to be manned. It's going to be manned? I don't know. I would assume so. The pros mission. Whew. That's when you'll know humans are for real. When we start just going out into space and being like, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Actually, that, there's no way that would be a manned mission, right? No. That's the one thing I've noticed about space exploration is that no one has the sheer like you just got desperation <laughs> to just fly into space. It's going to be 44 years there and 44 years back. Assuming there is a back. Woo. Yeah, you got to just No, gotta. you ain't coming back, dude. You're going out. You spend 44 years in space. You come back to Earth's gravity. I don't think you just... I don't think you're bouncing on that shit. Yeah, you know why they're probably doing this? Because uh, they know that s- someone's privately going to beat them to Mars. So they're going to be like, oh, yeah, you guys can work on Mars. Man. We're going to Alpha Centauri. How lame will it be <laughs> if Mars just gets taken over by, like, corporations? It's just... just uh, how lame would it be? Oh, that'd be I'd, awesome. They'd, Actually, they'd, get them all over there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no shit. Well, that, well, no, that'd be first of all. We can all the anarcho capitalists and libertarians here would we just send them off there? So then we'll probably have like one, you know, ca- uh, one free for all, laissez faire, free market planet, and then another planet full of communists, and then they could stop arguing on Reddit. Man. <laughs> Okay, I don't know if anyone else thought that was as funny as I did. <laughs> but, uh, what's that? Oh, <laughs> funny. So, there we have it. Star Wars, robots, cars, planes, trains, automobiles, and uh, a little bit about Alpha Centauri. Yep. Four, 4.37 light years away. Damn. So if you travel at the speed of light, it'll only take four and a half years to get there. Oh. So if we go... At a healthy little clip. So if we go a tenth of the speed of light, it'll take 45 years, 44. And uh, that's uh, assuming that no one gets pulled over on the way, you, you know, for breaking the speed limit. <laughs> That'd be, that'd be funny if you're out there cruising and then all of a sudden this other space, contact, the spaceship shows up and it's yeah. like, do you know how fast you're going? Yeah. There's kids in this neighborhood yeah. who are like, what? First contact is a traffic cop. <laughs> Ooh, looks we're like need you, to see you in court. Looks like we don't have you in the system. We're going to have to take you in for a couple questions. Yep. <laughs> I need it. to search this the trunk. All right. Thank you for joining us today live from the Groove Surfer Studio.